All right, guys, so we're gonna go over the basic circuitry for this IMU and magnetometer lab. Now, all we're doing in this lab is taking measurements from our IMU and the magnetometer that's incorporated into the IMU, porting it with the Arduino and passing it through a COM port to uh, MATLAB on a laptop. So there are really only four basic connections that you need to make between the Arduino Nano and the IMU. Number one, you're just gonna connect the ground pin on the Arduino to the ground pin on the IMU. You're gonna connect the five volt port on the Arduino to the VIN port on the IMU. It needs to make an analog connection. Uh, we did A4. Uh, so from A4 to the SDA pin on the IMU. And then another analog port, we used A5 to the SCL pin on the IMU. All right, so those are the only four basic connections that you need to make. These connections, in our case, on our controller, all of those connections are gonna be on the same side of the, as the Arduino as the digital pins. You may choose to do this the same way as we did. Uh, so that your movements with the IMU when we're actually controlling the graphic in MATLAB uh, will correspond to the same movements in our code. You can orient this oppositely if you want, but you may have to change the signs of your axes in the MATLAB code later. All right, so you can see that the Arduino code is relatively short. It's pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, we're gonna start out by including the libraries that we need. Pretty much all four of these are specifically for the IMU that we're gonna use, so you could just copy paste this section. Here we're declaring an object called BNO that more or less represents our IMU that we're using. It's the Adafruit BN0055. In the setup function, we're just gonna begin our serial connection at 9600 baud rate. Uh, you're going to initialize the BNO. This if statement is basically just saying that if you can't begin that communication with the IMU, you just go into an infinite while loop. Uh, once you set that up, you're gonna have a one second delay. All right, and then if you go into our main loop, these two lines will get set up a new event and get your new sensor data. Next, you're going to just print to the serial monitor. So the two different chunks of data that we're gonna be printing are our absolute orientation in the form of an X, Y, and Z component and our magnetometer data uh, down here. Now, if you look at the spec sheet for this IMU or you go to the PDF whose link is included in the video description, there are many, many, many different data points uh, or individual sensors that you can get data points from using this IMU. Uh, we're just gonna be using, in this lab, we're gonna be using event orientation, which represents our absolute orientation and magnetometer data. Most of the different instruments have a very similar way to receive data from them. And you can see that in the included PDF. All right, so now let's go look at the MATLAB code. All right guys, so we're gonna start going over the MATLAB code section and how to generate a representation of what your IMU data is actually telling you. So we'll go through this section by section. First off, we're just gonna clean up, clear variables, close windows, etc. Second, we're going to establish our serial connection. So we this chunk of code is actually very common in some of the labs, the other labs that we're doing. So there's a bit of repetition. You're just gonna delete any existing serial connections you have. You're going to declare what COM port you're using. In our case, number four. This set of four lines are pretty standard. You're just declaring your baud rate um, that you're using 9600 in our case. You're going to open the serial port that you're using. And then a slight pause just to make sure you were able to open your serial port. Uh, and then these two variables, you'll see a little bit further on in the code. Second, 
major section, we're going to create the geometry that we're going to be using to represent our IMU data. Uh, in this case, it's a, a teapot, which is makes it easy because this is one of the built-in MATLAB examples that they use kind of often to represent a shape is a teapot. So you can set that equal to three different vectors and that loads the data from the teapot geometry into those three vectors. Uh, this is our main loop. This is going to be happening. This is going to be running continuously in a while loop. The entire thing is going to be timed so you can see our tick and talk variables. Uh, the reason we want to do that is because whenever you have a serial connection between an Arduino that's running code and MATLAB that's running code, you want to make sure that your timing is perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be good. And the, when I say good, I mean that you want MATLAB to be, to be requesting or reading information quicker than your Arduino is. So in the Arduino code that we'll go over separately, there will be a delay at the end of the code of a certain number of milliseconds. And we want to be able to compare that to how quickly MATLAB is running. So that's why we have our tick and talk variables. So we'll be able to tell, it'll print to the command window what the elapsed time between tick and talk is. And we'll be able to compare that to our delay at the end of the Arduino code. So we're going to get the last line of data that was sent from the COM port, and we're going to split that line based on where the commas are. Uh, in our case, we're gonna be sending our absolute orientation and magnetometer measurements from our IMU. In this example, we have the magnetometer measurements commented out. But if you want to display those, all you have to do is display them in the command window. And this is just going to be displaying the X vector with a comma and then the Y vector and the Z vector. And the reason we comment that out is because uh, displaying something in the command window actually takes some time. And so your display, your uh, display of the teacup is actually going to be better with less lag if you comment that out but we're just keeping it here so you can we can show you that it is possible to do that. Next up, the IMU X direction actually measures data from 0 to 360. And so we want to be able to reorient the teacup in terms of its absolute orientation, its absolute displacement from 0. So all we're doing here is we're saying that if the angle that's being measured in the x-axis from the IMU is between 180 and 360. We're just going to redefine that as a negative displacement from zero. All right, and then from the three vectors that we defined up here, we're going to create a patch, which is a way for MATLAB to create three-dimensional objects from different vectors that you've generated. So you can see we're defining faces, we're defining vertices, etc. And that's going to be stored in the variable called H surface. And you can see there's some comments here if you're if you're interested about specific lines and what they do. This for loop goes through each of the axes x, y, and z, and it rotates it. So you can use the MATLAB rotate command and the arguments into that are what you want to rotate, what around which axis you're going to rotate, and how much you're going to rotate it in degrees. So you can see we have to define offset, we have to define direction, and direction is just a, a vector of zeros, and whichever axis you want to rotate, that, that index in that vector of zeros is just going to be 1. And for the purpose of this animation, we're actually switching the X and Z axis so that your movement of the IMU is going to correspond to the correct movement of the teapot. Uh, as you can see, every single time that we plot this teapot, we want to be able to see it, so we're going to turn it on. But every time that we rotate it, we want to turn off 
the last teapot that we plotted. So that's why you can see that we're saying h surface dot visible off and h surface dot visible on, and that's just going to turn on and off the last the last plot that we that we generated. You can see the view command here, and that just tells MATLAB that you want to view our teacup from a certain angle, a certain azimuth angle, and a certain elevation angle. So in our case, we're just measuring from 180 degrees azimuth angle and zero degrees elevation angle. Uh, we're going to have a brief pause so that MATLAB actually has a chance to plot our figure. Uh, and then you can see our final talk command, and that's going to print in the command window what the elapsed time between tick and talk was uh, inside of our while loop. So we'll run the program and see what it looks like.